Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Jogit Chandra from India Institute of Technology. He'll be presenting a paper, Role of Trust in Evolution of Scientific Collaboration Networks. Uh, this is work with, between him and Abhijit Ganyan, also from India Institute of Technology. That is, that how 
the cross, the dynamics of the cross actually induces the formation of new links and so on. And how this cross dynamic effects gets propagated across the networks. That is how we that is what we try to look at. Now the question is that how do we measure trust in a co-authorship network? Well, the number of publications is one such matrix that I have already said, but there can be several other ways of actually measuring trust. Trust, as a whole, it can be perceived in two ways. One can have a concept of a node trust, for example, an, an author who is universally recognized as very famous, like Hewing or uh, maybe Bose in India, where if you even don't work in that area, you still know that if you get a paper of him, he is probably one of the best authors, so there is a high uh, global trust for that particular author. We term such kind of trust as a node trust. So it's a trust where it's a global property where any of the other researchers actually have some faith on that particular researcher, whether he has worked with him or not. Then we introduce the concept of a personalized notion of trust. So for an example, if researcher A works with researcher B and has produced several publications, obviously there is a presence of mutual trust among these two authors because they are actually directed by someone and they are producing high number of publications. So if A and B has produced high number of publications, much higher as compared to A and C, we will say that the strength of the relation between A and B is much higher as compared to A and C. We define this concept as a link trust. So if two authors have directly collaborated with each other, we term them as a direct trust. Okay, well, if two authors have papers with themselves, among themselves, and this direct trust is actually proportional to the number of papers who has co who, um, which have been co-authored by these two papers. Then, we have another notion of trust, which is the indirect notion of trust, or indirect trust. Indirect trust is basically a trust between two authors, which indicates that whether there is a potentiality of collaboration among them. So, this typically arises out from the concept of transitivity. So, I will just have to say it like this, that if A and B have a lot of collaborations, and B and C have also a lot of collaborations, then there is a mutual trust that can have between A and C. So there is a potentiality that at some point of time, they will also start collaborating. So, So, we have the concept of the node trust, we have the concept of link trust. So, let us now see individually or have a more closer look at how we can actually define or measure this node trust. So, to measure node trust, we propose three distinct metrics. One is the number of co authors that an author can have, that is one global perception of trust. So, if he has authored with many number, like Ardos, uh, he has authored with many number of uh, co authors. So, the number of co-authors of an author can be a measure of trust. Then, you have a total weight, that is, the total number of publications that has been made by an author. So, if an author has a very high number of publications, you say that, okay, that author might be a very trusted author. Then, you have one, we have one more important parameter that might be important, is the weight per link. So, if you have got maybe around 1000 publications with 10 authors, what is the average number of publications that we are producing per author. So the weight per link is one another measure that we have taken to measure a node trust. The concept of link trust, as I said, can also be measured. So this concept of link trust basically relies on the direct link trust concept where A and B has co-authored among themselves and an indirect link trust concept where A and C has a potentiality of collaboration. We can measure. There are several, there are several studies also. You can, we have one older paper, and then one paper by Walter, who measured such kind of indirect trust in recommender systems. So, if you have, 
So, an uh, indirect cross between two nodes I and J is actually proportional to the indirect cross between node I and some node K multiplied by the indirect cross between K and J. So that's how you get the transitive relation in Even if I and J has a direct cross relation, that also plays a role in the indirect cross relation as a well. whole. But if the distance among these goes higher, so for an example, A to B has collaborated, B to C has a collaboration, so there is a likely chance of A and C collaborating. But if you increase the number of hops, for example, A to B, B to C, and C to B, then the potentiality of this collaboration decreases with the increase in the number of paths. So that's why we have to take a damping factor beta, which includes this particular damping, or which actually includes uh, this kind of concept that when you increase the number of paths, the indirect cross between them actually diminishes. So, what we observe, or rather what we are trying to observe, we have done an empirical analysis from a data source of the publications in the area of computer science for the last 40 years. This data was actually not collected uh, in our institute, it was collected in much older institutes. What we had is, uh, we collected, we mentioned actually we got more than, we got several areas, but we actually identified or took uh, these three areas into, uh, observed these three areas. So we had this many number of publications in databases, it's around 60,000 authors. And uh, in algorithms we had more than 100,000 publications with this many number of authors. So we actually observed the trend in these areas. What we observed is, uh, we tried to observe the relationship we try to observe the relationship between the different node trust matrices. We try to find out that what is the influence of node trust in the network evolution. What is the influence of link trust in the network evolution. And then we find or try to find out the influence of trust transiting. Now, to observe the relation between the three different node trust parameters that we have taken, we try to find out the correlation between the degree of a node and the weight coordinate. So what we did was that we observed, we started from the 0th year. So we started our reference from the 0th year and observed that how over the time the degree of the nodes and the weight per link of the nodes actually correlate over the time from the 0th year. We find that actually the correlation is high, it's more than 0 0.7 but actually diminishes over time, it somehow reduces. Not in the case of databases, we could not explain why this behavior actually happened in the case of databases, there might be some reason for it. But what we find is that, that there is a very high correlation between the total, the degree of a node and the total number of publications uh, that uh, author produces. Not the total number of, the total number of publications, the, 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 uh, the number of publications per co-author of a paper, the, the weight per link, that is what it is. But there is also a high correlation between the degree of a node and the total weight, but actually that diminishes over the time. That is what it is supposed to be. So if you take a 10 year reference period, then the correlation is going to decrease in some But still, it's high. To observe the influence of node trust, what we see is that, that how a new node tries or attempts to connect to an existing node based on the degree and based on the weight per link of an existing node. So we try to observe that if a new node tries to connect it, what kind of behavior this, uh, this degree and the weight per link is going to have, or what kind of a, uh, effect this degree and the weight per link is going to have. What we did was, we collected the number of nodes that gets attached to nodes with trust value m. Trust basically means either we take the degree or we take the weight per length. We, we, we take both. So, we divide by, or, so we get, get this attachment probability by the total number of nodes that gets attached to trust value m and the total number of new links or total number of attachments that actually come. We get a behavior something like this. So, it's it's a generic curve. You can see this, there is a similarity in all the three curves, almost. Now, when you try to 
model this, this you will find that so this particularly uh, the this straight line is basically the empirical one and this dashed line is our model. So what you find was that this attachment is somehow following a preferential law. So if the probability, so it is basically proportional to the degree of this. So if a node has high degree, if he has high number of co-authors, then there is a very high likely chance that a new author is going to come and actually work with him. But if you look at the weight per link, that is the average number of average number of uh, publications per co-author that an author has produced, there is a strange relation. Here it is not purely preferential. What we find is that that when we try to model it, there is a dampening factor that gets important. So what it basically means is that that if if there is a strong correlation or if if the strength of the relation between two authors between or there is a cluster of authors who are actually producing a lot of publications among them, then there is a very unlikely chance that a new author is going to come and work and join that community. So strong research communities actually does not open the door too much for newer uh, co-authors to actually come. So that, that will have an effect when you see the overall picture of how the network is actually evolving. To see the strength or to see the link trust, what we find is that we find we at, for the case of link trust we observe two things. One we observe that how the link trust is affecting further collaboration between two authors. For an example, so if author A and B uh, has already collaborated, so and if there is a strength which is very high, then how that effect is actually getting propagated in further collaboration. So if there is a collaboration between two authors, then how that collaboration is growing? On what factors will it grow? We also see the simultaneous, we also see one another phenomena where if there is a high strength between two authors, that is more number, high number of publications, what is the probability that a new author comes and simultaneously work with both of them? So that is how the effect of link trust is going to play out. Again, we observe similar behavior in both these cases. But typically what we observe over here is that, that when two authors has a high strength among themselves, that continues over a period of time, that lingers on. It's not that a high publication finishes in two years or three years, that actually lingers. So if there is a high publication, it's more likely that they are going to continue. Finally, for the case of trust transitivity, what we see was that, that if, how the transitivity plays a role in this particular case. What we observed is, we tried to find out the potential indirect trust between two authors. So that is how the transitive relation gets propagated. And we observe that what is the rate of conversion depending upon the indirect trust. So if an indirect trust is high, what is the potential rate of conversion? What we observe is that typically this indirect trust relation, they actually, they, they can actually explain the behavior of further connectivity. So when the indirect trust relation is high, you see that there is a noticeably higher rate of conversion from an indirect trust to a direct trust. So if the two authors has somehow collaborated, I mean, so they are connected by more than one path or more than one hop, there is very likely chance that they will be collaborating among themselves. So this is what we observe in the case of uh, trust transitivity. The paper also maintains or provides some mathematical models for this, uh, but which I skip over here. And we find that there is a strong correlation between this uh, potentiality of collaboration among the authors and the indirect trust value. So indirect trust value actually provides a good measure of predicting future collaborations among the authors. So, conclude. So what we have done is uh, we have proposed several matrices to measure the node trust and link trust in co-authorship networks. We have established the relation between the trust matrices. The individual matrices behave differently in the network growth. And what we find is that, that the evolution of these co-authorship networks is not driven by a single phenomena, which many of the authors have actually seen. They have observed the power law behavior as a preferential attachment tool. But this is not actually the case. It is guided by several different trust dynamics 
which has different effects on the network. So that needs to be closely looked through in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions?